Hey everybody, this is Waze back with another video on the channel. Today we're going to talk about how to become a power developer by using JetBrains tools. I have been using JetBrains IDEs for over 10 years and I feel like people using these IDEs, they're not using the full potential of these IDEs. And I want to show you my workflow, which I can bet you will increase your productivity and the speed of developing softwares to, let's say, 5x. JetBrains has many tools like WebStrom. I'll show you the tool they provide to install all of their tools. It's called JetBrains Toolbox, and you can search on Google to download Toolbox if you have a multiple subscriptions for all of their IDEs. I'm going to be showing you the WebStrom workflow, but the workflow that I'm going to show you will work on other IDEs like Rider and IntelliJ IDEA. And if you are doing an Android development, you will be using Android Studio. And Android Studio is built on the top of uh, JetBrains IDE, which means all of these trips and tricks and productivity tools will work on that. So we will start by looking at the navigation. I'm going to be using this sample project. This is the project that I built using JetBrains IDE. So the first topic and the tip I want to give you to save time is figuring out how you navigate into your JetBrains IDE. One of the main thing that developers do is switch between these two windows. So right now I've got this project window and then there are other windows that I can go to. For example, if I want to use the Git, I will have to go take my mouse and then click on this little button and that will open the Git. Now this takes a lot of time when using the mouse because you have to move your right hand if you're right-handed to the mouse and then take your mouse to that specific icon and then click on it and that's five seconds or three seconds and you're switching every day for almost eight hours then that time adds up the first tip that i can give you is by going to the settings and making sure that you set your shortcut keys for switching between your most used tool windows so if you go to key map in the settings you're going to go to two windows and if I expand this, you'll see I have a lot of shortcut keys set up. Now, there are a lot of tool windows in it, but the most common ones that I use are the one I set the shortcut keys. For example, I want to go to project window. I want to go to Git. I want to go to debug window. I want to go to find and run and then services. So here are my shortcut keys. As you can see here, you can set your own shortcut keys because once you set your shortcut keys, you are going to be basically building your muscle memory. So make sure you set your shortcut keys. Now let's just say there are a lot of tool windows and you don't want to remember. I'm going to give you a shortcut key that you can remember, which is Command E on a Mac and a Control E on Windows, which gives you the recent files and also gives you ability to switch a bit between your tool windows by using keyboards. So you don't have to move your hand to reach out for the mouse and then switch. You can simply use the keyboard and then press enter and that will go to that tool window. So remember, control E on Windows and command E on Mac. Another thing that I would like to show you is we need to usually work with a lot of files. And in most common IDs like VS Code, we usually switch between tabs, but the easier and the better way to switch between your recent file is by using the same shortcut key, Command E or Control E, and you can see what are the recent files that I have worked with. And the best way to go to the files that you are doing some editing is by checking this radio box, and that will show you what has changed according to the Git. And you don't need to even touch your mouse, you just press Command E one more time, and that uh, radio button or checkbox get checked. I touch mouse when I'm in IDE and I'll show you how I do that. So that's the navigation of a tool windows. Let's talk about the most common shortcut keys that you're going to need if you want to avoid using mouse. So if I switch to project window, I'm actually going to zoom in and then I'll zoom into 150 so we can see it much better. All right, so let's say if I want to go to project window and I want to switch to the different files. Now, if you have a keyboard with left and top and down arrow key, which is really good, that's totally fine. But I find it very slow to actually switch to move your hand and go to up 
right left arrow keys because you're going to move this hand to a little bit right and you're going to make sure that how you navigate so what i've done is um remap those keys by using the jkl hatch which is like equal to win which we'll talk about so let's say if i want to go to new files i can go right there i don't need to move my head at all and reach out to the arrow keys at all so i can go you know up and down enter and then open close do basically navigation what you do with the arrow keys and i can go into git log and i can go up and down pretty much anywhere you want to do in ide now the most common command that i use is the action command so if you go to your mouse and click on find action the default shortcut key for that is command shift a or control to down windows and then in this you will find like 99 percent of all the commands that this ide offers so instead of using arrow keys i actually used the remapped arrow keys you know so i don't need to move my hand and that saves a lot of time even if it saves one second so imagine you want to do this at least 300 to 400 times if you're coding for eight hours it's going to save you a lot of time and if i go to settings and show you key map as you can see i'm using the keyboard only right now and I can go up and down and I'm going to show you the shortcut key that I've set for it. So if I show you the up arrow and you will see I've got this up arrow or command up, but that's not what I want to show you. I want to show you the inherited from. So in editor actions, the up key has up arrow control P, which is basically the Vim, but I've also remapped it to option k and you can change that to all k if you want to similarly if i will go across actually my webstorm died that's pretty good let me restart that webstorm all right let's go back and then we're gonna go to up arrow here i'm gonna actually zoom in zoom back into let's say 150 okay and then go back here click on up arrow again and i click on this and oh, that kills it there's a bug in jetbrains ide now let me show you how i remap the editor option so i'll just click here and click on down and then you will see that i've got this option j and you can remap this to alt j so let me go in here go to editor actions and then you will see down left, which is this option hatch. You can remap this to all that. Basically, it allows me to move to the text, to the windows, pretty much anywhere I want to move. I can move left, up, and down by just keeping my hands, this hand, and pressing the option key with the thumb. That saves me a lot of time. So make sure you do that because that's going to save a lot of time. Couple more shortcut keys that I'm going to show you is switching the tabs. So for example, if I open this file, open that file, and now let's say I want to switch to stressmark.js file, I can just use my shortcut key without moving it too far to the arrow keys, and I can switch between the tabs as well. And this shortcut key is great because if I go to Git and I'm currently looking at local changes, but I can switch to log, and back as you can see that's very easy for the services i don't have a lot of services but if i had a lot of services i can switch between the tabs as well so this worked pretty much everywhere for example here you can see i can uh, switch between these options so project files tests open files and all that stuff i can switch between those by using the shortcut key and what you want to do is you're going to go here and then select previous tab and select let me next tab you want to set this shortcut key and you want to set those shortcut key where you don't need to move your hand so your hand basically stays on the keyboard where your old alphabets are so that's the second shortcut key that i make sure that's set up and then i utilize this action tool window which gives me pretty much all the commands that i need i just have to type it for example if I type git, I'm going to get lots of git related commands like github copilot and stuff. Now in here, I can switch between these tabs as well using the same shortcut key, which is very useful. 
Sometimes you want to search for files. Sometimes you want to search for action. Sometimes you want to search for symbols, text, and, and so on. But I want to set the shortcut key for directly going to the files as well, which is like most common uh, process that developers do when working with large uh, source code. You need to find the file, right? Now, another thing in terms of navigation, let's just say you want to find out where this file exists in your project window, for example, this server.js. So I'm going to just collapse everything and I'm going to show you one shortcut key that I've set up, which is option F1. This is my custom, but if I go to actions and I use select in and enter, and you can see this tells me, uh, it gives me uh, a couple of options, for example, the project window, file structure, web browser, revealing finder. So if I want to open this current file in the project window, I'll just press one and enter or just enter and you'll see it will expand that particular folder. And that helps me to, you know, go to work other files I want to work with. Another shortcut key that I set up is using this crumb kind of thing. So if I use that, I can switch between files pretty much right on the spot. And I don't need to have that window open. And I usually work with like full distraction free mode, which is going to be basically no tool window at all whatsoever it's a simple plain code and i can use my shortcut key to bring up the tool window which i use most commonly a few more shortcut keys before we get to the next topic one of the shortcut key that i use is organize my tabs for example if i want to work with two files side by side i would like to split my tab into two for example if i press this shortcut key as you can see it splits uh, my tab and i can look at the same file and I want to set a shortcut key for switching between these two tabs as well. So for example, if I go in here and I have two files side by side and I can create more tabs if I want to, and I can close them by using another shortcut key. Now, the good thing is JetBrains allows you to set shortcut keys very easily. As I said earlier, if you go to actions, you'll find all the actions that you could do in JetBrains IDE by just searching for it. For example, if you want to search for close, and then here I have this close tab. Now, right here, if you look at include disabled actions, JetBrains allows you to set the shortcut key very easily. Now, let's just say if I want to set a shortcut key for close other tabs, I can set directly here. As you can see, it says at the right, here it says assign shortcut key you can press option enter and alt enter on windows and it will allow you to set shortcut key right here so you don't have to go to the settings go to key map and then find a shortcut key and then set it that's really good so if i search for like command shift w and it'll tell me if the command already exists so if i say command w you will see it has a it's already assigned to these options. We want to make sure that we assign a shortcut key, which is not already assigned. So that's really handy. And I really appreciate this feature ability to set shortcut key for your most used commands. It's very handy. For example, press option enter, and then you can set the shortcut key for these particular things. So let's say if I want to see the shortcut key for splitting, I'll go split right. And my shortcut key is option p and v and you might be wondering what is option p and comma v let's just say i will go ahead and then set a shortcut key for split and move down okay i can press option enter and then here i've got two things i've got the first stroke and a second stroke let's say if i want to switch to the you know, split and move down i can set the first shortcut key let's say option p and it says hey it's already assigned let's say if i enable the second stroke and i say dot now it's not assigned so what will happen is like i will set option p and then i'll press dot straight away and then this command will trigger now i have set a lot of shortcut key that's why i use this second stroke as well which comes really handy because i don't really have enough keys for all my shortcut keys Okay, that's working with your files and then switching between those. That's really handy. Now, another shortcut key that I really would like to set is somewhat you want to maximize the, the tab that you're on. For example, if you want to work on this stress mock, but that's not enough for me, that space on the right is not enough. What I can do is I can maximize this tab. 
by pressing option M. This is my custom command. You can see I can maximize this tool window. I'll go to the next one and I can maximize and then come back to its original size. Now that command is if you go to maximize editor, my shortcut key for that is option M. And I will go and press option enter and that'll basically allow me to set a second stroke as well. Some of the commands I have set up a second stroke because I don't have enough keys left on my keyboard for all the shortcut keys that I have. All right, so that's my common shortcut keys. And the more shortcut keys I will be talking about when we talk about certain other features for Japan's ID. As a software developer, you need to be able to use Git, right? And I have set up shortcut keys for Git as well, but I'll show you if you really want to use some Git commands really quickly using the mouse, you can do that as well. I will show you how you can customize this toolbar. So if you go right click and I say customize toolbar, and here you get the tool window where you can customize all the common shortcut keys. For example, I would like to see what is my current branch. So here is like release slash v12. And I would like to use this update project. So differences, push, pull command, and commit. Now, all of these are basically, I'm going to be using trigger key, but if you want to customize the top toolbar, you can do that as well. And that might help you to quickly use this command because Git commands are really common, but then you're not going to be using on every second stroke. So you can customize the uh, toolbar. Okay, so next up is sometimes you want to run your project. And in JetBrains IDE, people coming from VS Code or some other IDEs, they usually go to terminal and they will run the commands. For example, npm run start command. I'll go to package.json file and here I've got lots of scripts here and I can run those using npn run and then the name of the command, for example, UAT, you can do that, but I don't recommend that. The JetBrains IDs allows you to run these commands by clicking on this play button directly. Once you click on this play button, it creates a script for you. And you can see right here, I've got one script, which is server. I'll click on this little arrow and I'll click on edit configuration. And here in WebStrong, you have JavaScript related configuration, but if you're using IDE like IntelliJ or Rada, you have other options as well. So I'll click on this play button. As you can see, I can create a script or a run command using all of these options like Docker run command, grunt, gulp, HTTP request, JavaScript debug, and so on, and the Node.js as well. Usually what I do is I will go ahead and then create my NPN scripts right here. And then if you want to run these scripts at the same time, I'll click on plus and I'll click on compound and I'll say, let's say FE run only. And I'll click on this plus button and I'll select what I want to run. So I want to run UAT there and I want to run server and maybe I want to run this debug UAT as well. Now, if I click on apply, click OK, you'll see I've got this command. Now it's OK to use the, the mouse as well, but I would recommend to set a shortcut key for that as well. So for me, it's this run command. Let me just search for it. So here, run command, I click on it and it's gonna run it. But what I've done is set up a shortcut key and I wanna go to see what's my shortcut key. So this, I'm gonna set the second stroke, which is R. And that's my run command. So I use option P for a lot of commands that I have a second stroke for. But the default command you might be using is Control Shift R or Alt Shift R on a Windows where you can look at it. Make sure you run all of these configuration and you can switch between like normal up, down, left, right arrow keys. This is gonna save a lot of time by the way, okay? And same way, if you have a run, you gotta go, let's say debug this, you press hold the shift and then the run switches to debug and you can run all the commands that you created in a debug mode. And I have other projects which I cannot show, but if you open .NET project, for example, you'll see the .NET writer IDE will automatically have lots of commands for you here, but I'll show you how you can create a custom command and use this shortcut key to quickly run those commands, which is gonna save a lot of time. Okay, so that's for running commands. Now I'm gonna talk about extensions next.
extensions are basically allow you to add functionality to JetBrains IDE. It's like a similar concept when it comes to extensions in VS Code. Now, my favorite and number one extension that I cannot live without is Wim. Wim is really a set of shorter keys that any IDE can implement. And VS Code has a Vim extension as well. Uh, they have this extension called IDE Vim. I've installed it. And what it allows me to do is if I go to Chrome and here's a page for Vim cheat sheet. All of these commands you can use in your IDE once you install Vim. So if I go back to WebStrong, for example, if you want to move up and down in the file, I can use those commands like JKL hatch. I'll go to one of the types group file. Let's just say I'll go to app component. Let me just go into some sort of file that has some data, some text. Now let's just say if I want to, this is a long line. Let's say if I want to switch to, let's just say next equal to sign. So I'll type my shortcut key and that gives me ability to switch between equal to in the line. I want to delete the line. I can delete the line. I can do undo. I can select in the parentheses. For example, if I go select that, I want to select the full word. I can select that. I can switch between words like very easily. So all of these commands are available for you if you installed Vim. And let me tell you, if you're a developer and you don't know Vim, you're missing out. I see in my team and other places, a lot of time people spend almost 50% of their time wasted towards editing files. For example, if I want to go and search for this word, I can search for this word and then select all of them and then add the replace them by selecting all the instances available. And that's coming from a whim. So a lot of things that you can do very fast. You can use Wim for editing your files and also it's going to save you at least 50% time. For example, if you're working for a company and you are able to do a job in five hours, trust me, once you get used to with Wim and build your muscle memory for all of these commands, you will be able to write code faster, edit code faster. Now this allows you to switch between different IDEs as well. A lot of IDEs like VS Code has a Vim extension as well. For example, if I open my terminal, my terminal is of choice is Bob, and I go to one of the folder, let's say try out, and I will go and open this here, same folder, and I will use new Vim, which is again a Vim, but it's in the terminal. So now you can see I can use same Vim power and edit files very easily with the same shortcut keys and I'll go and open and show you the app component. So for example, if I want to select the constructor, I can select that and delete it. If I want to select inside the parentheses, I can select everything in the parentheses. If I want to select this whole function in Nginx, I can do that. Let me go ahead and then say, there you go. And you can basically edit using Vim anywhere like terminal, like in VS Code. So that gives you power to edit the same way and edit much faster, not just in web to ID, other places as well. The number one recommended recommendation for you guys from this video is start using Vim. It's really hard to get started with because there's a lot of keys and some people don't like remembering the keys, but once you remember some of the most common keys, you can actually code faster. And a good part is you can actually use a Vim in the browser if you're a web developer. For example, if I will go to this website, I'm going to scroll down, I can use the Vim here as well. So let's say if I want to click on developer tools, I can press the key and I um, click on, not click, but type that particular item that will make it click on that particular anchor link in the page. So let me go. This is not a really good website, but let's say she saw tutorial. I'll click on one of my set key like F and then I can type SJ to go to C sharp type casting page. I can scroll. I can basically navigate the website and this browser Chrome has the Vim extension as well. So you can install Vim in the browser and you will have the same power of Vim in the browser as well. Now, 
This is Vim. Now a couple more extensions that I would like you to install if you're using WebStorm. Here is the database tools and SQL for WebStorm. So if you have a full IDE subscription, then you can install it. But this is an extra extension that doesn't come with the WebStorm. But if you have IntelliJ, it's built into that. So this allows you to switch to any of the database and write SQL queries, do Mongo, do Redis, and they have a lot of uh, different data sources available for you as well. So this is a great way of increasing your productivity. I know many developers like SQL Server and they use a Microsoft SQL Studio, I guess, but moving away from your IDE is going to waste a lot of time for you. So you want to make sure that you have all the shortcut keys set up. For example, if I go into database, I can go into Mongo and then I can use the same shortcut key to go into different items in the database tool window and I can write a SQL queries and whatever I wanted to. And that saves me a lot of time so I don't have to switch to a different software or app to do the job. Now I'm going to talk about switching between different places in your source code. For example, I'm working on five different files and I want to switch to a particular line. Now it's going to save uh, me time if I have a way to switch to a specific line number or somewhere in the code very easily instead of just going in here, searching for a file and going back to it. So WebStorm or IntelliJ ID has a pretty good support for bookmarks and I've set a shortcut key for those as well. For example, I want to bookmark this constructor. I'll press F3. You need to find out the shortcut key on your uh, default. So in case if I have this toggle bookmark, so this is my toggle bookmark shortcut key, but it's up to you how, what you want to set for that. So now I have this bookmark. I switch to this file. I can bookmark this part. I want to work, I want to work on this part of the code. So there's three places that I'm working on currently, and I can press command F3 and I can switch between these three places very easily. So if I want to work on this function, I can switch to it. I want to go back to the previous function. I can switch to that. And that saves a lot of time. And trust me, if you have 20 files open and you don't know which file and where you want to work on, you can actually very easily create bookmarks and switch to those. So press command. F3, that gives you this bookmark window, and then all the bookmarks are here, and I can switch to those. That's really handy to speed up your workflow. Next, we're going to talk about to dos. So, comments are really great, but sometimes you want to come back to your source code and then edit those or type some information that you want to apply or fix or refactor, whatever it is. You want to make sure that they get checked with your ID. So, what I like to do is write double slash or depending on if you're using python that's a different way of writing a comment so basically start your comment and then simply say to do and add constructor as you can see webstrom made the different color for this line it's like a green and if i want to do i go in here i'm going to add another to do for example here and i will add constructor to do or let's just say second to do now I can find these to do's very easily. So if I go to this tool window and here you will see, we got around 13 to do's and I can switch to that particular file. Let's click on it. And that will take me to exact spot where this to do is. And I like to create to do's because that helps me to remember what I need to do on certain place of the source code. So this is really handy. Next, I want to talk about the local history. For example, you are working on some file and you have committed that file and pushed in the server and the Git has the snapshot where you commit your file, but not really what you added it in last one hour. So JetBrains IDs have a built-in local history. So if you go to local history, you can actually see the local history for a selection, right click and then go to your local history and then click on show history and they'll tell me what is the changes that I've done in the past for this file. Now you might be wondering, hey, why did you use a mouse to do a right click? I don't have to because I have a shortcut key for that. So if I press option set, that gives me the same context toolbar or I don't know, window where I can switch between options that I get for right clicking option Z. And if you want to set that, you go to key map and then go to 
let's just say show context menu, set the shortcut key for that. And then you'll be able to right click anywhere in your ID. So if I go in here, I want to right click for this prefixes dot component HTML file, I'll press option set. And now you see, I can create a new file or all the options that are related to the applicable file. So if I go to databases, I can press option Z. And now the context menu is according to where I right click. So I don't need to right click using mouse anywhere in my ID. And that saves a lot of time. Next, I want to show you one more uh, really cool feature of um, JetBrains IDE, which is refactoring. Now, you know, sometimes people uh, refactor something. For example, if I search for this file by the convention way is to search for it, let's say here, and then press control R and that gives you searchability, but also replace. So you can replace that with replace all, but the easier way, non-convention way is to actually do a refactoring. So if you go in here, right click on it and then go to refactor and then you can do a lot of things here in terms of refactor. So if you go, let's say rename and you see it selects all the instances, all the words in this file automatically. And if I change this, everywhere else it's already changing. Now this not only work in a, just the strings, but you can actually do a refactoring. For example, if I go and press up, uh, shift F six and then shift X six has this rename functionality. And if I change something, it will make sure it refactor everywhere, wherever I'm using the import. For example, if I go into component file and I want to change this to, let's say, blah, 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 and I press enter and it's going to ask me, Hey, you want to read the class? Do you want to change the component file as well? So the refactoring is pretty, pretty solid in JetBrains IDE and you can't get that in any other IDE. Even you go with the real studio or VS code, this is really good. Okay. So we talked a lot about uh, refactoring, but I want to show you one more thing before we go. A lot of times when you have some sort of, uh, unused imports in your file, for example, if I don't want to use this ng on init, okay. And then you see here, it's really fading out this ng on init, like this is the import. Now, in terms of deleting this manually, that's good. But what I can do is I can right click and then I can do optimize imports. Actually, right click doesn't have that option, but what you can do is um, go to action bars and I say optimize imports, and that's going to get rid of all the unused and then it will fix all your imports. And you can do so in the, in a file explorer or a project, right click and say optimize import. And it's going to go to pretty much every file in the folder and get rid of all the imports that are unused. And that's really good. And you can also select whether you want to only uh, apply this feature to the uncommitted file. That's really handy. Now, let me go to right click and then I'll show you this preformat code is an amazing feature and it's really advanced. So it can do a lot of things at the same time. So it can include subdirectories, optimize imports, rearrange entries, and then also do a cleanup of the code. Cleanup means if there's any unused property or if there's any unused function, it will give you a prompt whether you want to clean up or not. And the same thing, when you commit your file, you can do that while committing. So let's say reformat code, which means everything, every file that you have changed will be reformatted automatically before it gets committed. And you can use the pre file if you want to use the plugin for that. Let's go to marketplace and then you can do pre prettier. And that's really common. And a lot of teams use it. Uh, to make sure that all the identification of the code is similar across team. But JetBrain has a built-in, which I can use the command where command option L to reformat the file. For example, if I make some space here, make some space here, and I make some space here, I can press that shortcut key and everything will be reformatted according to my setting. And you can do a custom settings. Like if you go to tools, not actually tools, but languages, and you go to TypeScript and then Angular. Actually, you need to go somewhere else like editor, and then you can go to code editing, general code folding, 
edit the tabs. I think there's a file, so indent. And then you can see, you see that indent and tabs and then you can set your settings here, right? For example, in TypeScript, here's all the indent and settings that you can do. The last tip I want to give you before we wrap up this long video, I hope you learned a lot in this video, but the last tip that I'm going to give you is looking at what technology you're working with. For example, if you're using Angular, you got to make sure you go to plugins and then you have that extension installed from the official source. So for type for Angular, the Angular was already installed and it's bundled with WebStorm. But if you're using Go ID or other IDs, you might not have that extension. For example, this GraphQL wasn't installed automatically, so I had to install it. So you can basically look at your technology and then make sure that the extension that is default uh, installed, or if not installed, then you can go to plugins and install that extension, and that'll give you support for that particular technology. All right, I think this video is pretty long now, and these are all my tips to make the power users. But the conclusion is, start using Vim and you will save at least 50% of time when it comes to editing your code. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Cheers.